Welcome. On behalf of our Hunes family and staff, we want to welcome you here this evening to our 2015 holiday service of remembrance. Those taking part in the service tonight are Reverend David Lystra, pastor of the Sturgeon Bay United Methodist Church, Brian Fogarty, head of music ministry at Corpus Christi Catholic Church in Sturgeon Bay, and my family, whose uh, technical skills and uh, creative talents were greatly appreciated in bringing all of this together. My wife, Renee, Eric, and Brock. We gather this evening to gather strength from each other as we enter into this holiday season. Many of you and your family are without the physical presence of a family member or friend for the first time this Christmas season. Though for some of you, it may be years since that loved one was with you. Some of you may be caregivers and clergy, bereavement staff, and others who remember those special patients or families that you've dealt with over time. Through music, message, and light, we hope your participation this evening in this service gives you added strength to face the coming holiday season. Their passing was not easy for any of us, and the holidays make it even more difficult. In this service tonight, we come together to remember the children, women, and men who have died in our midst. We remember those who have died in service to our country. And then I wish that we would all be encouraged by their examples and strengthened by their legacies, that we may be more deeply aware of the goodness and the fragility of life as we hold them close in our hearts. We grieve because we love. We change how we look at things. Everything has a different meaning since they're gone. It's all changed. May we never forget. I will remember you. Will you remember me? Don't let your so tired I can't sleep standing on the edge of something much too deep it's funny how we feel so much but cannot say a word we are screaming inside oh we can be heard but I will not for the memory so afraid to love you more afraid to lose I'm clinging to a past that doesn't let me choose where once there was a darkness a deep and endless night you gave me everything you had gave me life and I will remember you will you remember me don't let your life pass you by weep not for the memory I will remember you, will you remember me, don't let your life pass you by, weep not for the memory. Weep not for the memories. In honor of all those who 
his dash. We remember today and every day. I read of a man who stood to speak at the funeral of a friend. He referred to the dates on the tombstone from the beginning to the end. He noted that first came the date of birth and spoke the following date with tears. But he said what mattered most of all was the dash between those years. For that dash represents all the time that they spent alive on earth. And now only those who love them know what that little line is worth. For it matters not how much we own, the cars, the house, the cash. What matters is how we live and love and how we spend our dash. So think about this long and hard. Are there things you'd like to change? For you never know how much time is left that can still be rearranged. If we could just slow down enough to consider what's true and real and always try to understand the way other people feel and be less quick to anger and show appreciation more and love the people in our lives like we've never loved before. If we treat each other with respect and more often wear a smile, remembering that this special dash might only last a little while. So when your eulogy is being read with your life's actions to rehash, would you be proud of the things they say about how you spent your dash? The Dash by Linda Ellis. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now am found, was blind, but now. grace that taught my heart to fear, and grace my fears relieved. How precious did that grace appear, the hour I first My chains are gone, I've been set free, my God and Savior has ransomed me, and like a flood, His mercy reigns, unending
shall soon dissolve like snow. The sun forbear to shine, but God who called me here below will be forever mine, will be Good evening. It's getting to look a little bit like Christmas. We all notice that. And uh, I don't know about you, but in my family's we've all, Christmas, we've always had traditions, lots of particular traditions. And some of them go back to when my oldest boys were born. And one of them is we watch programs together. And one of our family's favorites is a Charlie Brown Christmas. I don't know if you've seen that one. It's been on forever. And, and in the beginning of that program, little Charlie, he's about eight years old, is very depressed. He's upset. He doesn't understand why he feels that way. And he goes around, he tries to ask everybody, you know, what's wrong? Why do I feel this way? And he can't make sense of it. And, and finally, he comes across this psychiatric help kind of uh, little thing set out outside the, in the snow. And he goes over and he sits down there, and Lucy comes. You maybe remember Lucy. She's a little girl about his age, and she's got a sign up there that says, Psychiatric Help, five cents. He sits down there, and she pops in, and she gets her can out and turns the sign over. It says, The doctor's really in. Remember that? And pretty soon they're going through, and they're trying to figure out what's wrong with Charlie. What is wrong with Charlie that he isn't excited? He isn't happy. And finally, Lucy decides he lacks involvement. Remember that? She's going to get him to be the, the director of the Christmas play. That doesn't work for Charlie. He doesn't find himself feeling better. He finds himself frustrated and upset. And then little Linus, finally, after Charlie cries out in anguish, what is Christmas all about, really, anyway? What is it, what is it all about? And little Linus, he's the younger brother of Lucy, goes on stage in this place where they're practicing. And, and he remembers the story of Jesus Christ's birth from Luke. And he says at the end of that, after he's read that passage, he looks out at the audience who isn't there and he says, that's what Christmas is about, Charlie Brown. And when I think about that, I think about that story is all about hope and promise and new life. It makes me feel good now to watch that show, but a few years ago, I couldn't watch it. Our family came together. We were sitting around. It was the first Christmas in, 20, in 2012, and we were getting ready to do all of that kind of thing, like we always do. And I was really not feeling very good about Christmas that year. And I found out that I, I, I kind of kept feeling that way. I wouldn't watch Charlie Brown with him, and everybody wondered what was wrong with me. Why was I kind of grouchy? They equated me with Scrooge and several other things. And it got into the new year, and it only got worse, and I just didn't feel like doing anything kind of difficult when you're a pastor in a church, you know. Got to my birthday in February, and I found myself really seriously depressed and wondering what in the world is wrong with me. Thought about going, seeing someone for help. And then I was sitting there, and it occurred to me. My father had passed away on February 10th, about a decade earlier, and in that year, 2011, on February 4th, our first grandchild died during childbirth. And so I had come to connect these emotions and with these events that I had connected all my life to family and friends and joy. And it had taken the joy out of my life. I was fortunate enough to recognize that and have other people tell me, you know, maybe. And I thought about that. And, and it's still very sad for me as I come into Christmas, as we hold our new two-year-old grandson in our arms, and we recognize there should be another one, nearly five, running around with him. There's a sadness there that we can't deny. 
There's a sadness when I think about my father. As I get older myself, I'm just about the age when he died. And that affects you. We're human beings. It's supposed to do that. That's how we're built. It's what we're, we were created to be, are people who love and have relationships with family members and friends. And the deepness of that love, when it is severed, well, you just don't walk away from that unchanged. Sometimes when we have those events in our lives, we tend to try to push them down. People, after all, are saying, sometimes, you know, it, it's been a while. I had somebody tell me, you know, your dad's been gone 10 years. I don't think I'll ever get over that. It didn't make me feel any better. But I also know something about the fact that I now am a father. And I, and I could think in terms of how do I live for my children? How do I live for my family? How can I live hope even when I'm sometimes feeling hopeless, such as was common and still is around these days? Well, I can concentrate on relationships. You see, just as I know that relationships are why we're gathered here tonight, someone we cared about deeply, some of whom undoubtedly are in those pictures that are still playing in there, some of whom I knew, a few of whom I did their funeral. These are people with whom we had a relationship. These are people who mattered. They mattered to us. They mattered to our families. And now we're coming to that time where we celebrate family, we celebrate life, and it just doesn't feel right. And we want to think there's something wrong with us, like little Charlie Brown. But there's not. What you're feeling, what I feel, are perfectly normal human emotions. These people are still very much with us right here. And they always will be. They always will be with us and a part of who we are. Our lives change. Things aren't the same. And it's OK not to feel particularly jolly. It's OK not to feel particularly like doing some of the things that you always did do. That's all right. We all need to give ourselves some space. We need to understand why. And be ready to let ourselves be human. There's nothing wrong with that. But we also need to give others space, too, and understand that, you know, sometimes when that person in the line going through Walmart is kind of grumpy and is angry and it's the holidays, and maybe that's you, or maybe it's someone in front of you, and we say, well, how could they be that way during the Christmas season? Well, maybe there's something in their life. Maybe there's something that's striking them. And maybe it's not so much that, that it's, they're just grumpy people. Maybe they're people that are hurting in here. And as we understand that, because we're experiencing that, we have experienced that. If you live very long in this world, you will experience that. Maybe we can be that voice of, hope for them, that voice of there is a tomorrow and a next day. And those people with whom are, we still live, who are still with us, those relationships matter. We should learn from this. We should learn that just as it hurts to lose these wonderful people, there's a lot of wonderful people around us still. Relationships matter. If there's any message that comes out of the scriptures more clear than that, I don't know what it is. It's what Jesus spoke about all the time. He said, your relationship with your God matters. Now, if that's your faith tradition, that's a wonderful thing. If it isn't, just hear what he is trying to say to us. Relationships matter with your God, with your family, with your friends, with your neighbors. These things matter and ought not to be neglected. Ought not to be neglected. So this season, these holidays, hold those near to you even closer. Love them all the more. Let them know they matter to you. And if you have relationships that are important, that are broken for some reason, find a way to restore them. Because you see, these things matter. And they last, and they live, and they live with us forever. Just as these folks live forever. They live forever in here. 
And in my belief, they live forever with their God. I don't know about you, but when I celebrate Christmas this year, I'll be thinking about little Luke. I'll be thinking about my dad, my mother, my mother-in-law, my father-in-law, my sister-in-law, my brother-in-law, another sister-in-law that all died in the same four-year period right after Luke. I'll be thinking about all of them as we sit together as family. They'll be present with us as they always were during Christmas season. And I will remember just like the song. And I will probably shed a tear or two. But I will also look around the table and around the room and I will see those who are still with me. And I will say, you know, you matter too. And while we love each other and care for each other now in this life, that matters too. Let the holiday speak to you. Let it offer you the hope of the birth of the child who gives us life. But let it also be a reminder of just how much each one of us matters to each other, to our families, and how much they matter to us. In the name of my Lord, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. When troubles come and my heart burden be, then I am still and wait here in the silence until you come and sit a while with me. You raise me up so I can stand on mountains. You raise strong when I am on your shoulder. Raise me up to more than I can be. comes time for the first holiday season after the passing of a loved one, family member, or friend. We should all recognize that things won't be the same. It will be changed. Our pattern of celebrating the holidays together as family and friends will be different. <laughs> and our family has strongly believed over the years that it's important to acknowledge that change even in the midst of how we celebrate together as a family and friends, that we're still not waiting for the holidays of the past to 
present themselves as they always had been, but yet to acknowledge how things are and will be different for the days and holidays to come. Nothing will change the fact that they'll be difficult at times, any day, but there will also be ways to experience holidays and the days ahead with joy and pleasure. Finding joy in giving and receiving does not mean that you have forgotten your loved one or that you love him or her any less. And this is why we offer you these holiday Grievers Bill of Rights. You have the right to say, time out, any time you need to. Time out to let up, blow a little steam, step away from the holidays, have a huddle time, and start over. You have a right to tell it like it is. When people ask, how are you? You have the right to tell them how you really feel, not just what they want to hear. You also have the right to smile and say you're fine because telling them how you really feel isn't always possible with the time that you have. You have the right to say some bah humbug days. You don't have to be jolly old St. Nicholas all the time. And you're not a bad person just because you don't feel like singing Christmas carols all day. You have the right to do things differently. There is no law that says you must always do Christmas the same way. You can do 10 cards instead of 100, or no cards at all. You can open presents at somebody else's house. You can do so without a tree. You can have pizza instead of turkey. The list goes on. You have the right to be where you want to be. Be at home, or at relatives, or even a friend's house. Be in any city or any state or location you choose. Nobody said you have to have snow to have Christmas. There's no law that says you must stay home. You have the right to have some fun. When you have a day that isn't so bad and you feel like doing something for fun, then try it. Don't be afraid of what someone else will say if they see you laughing and even having a good time. Laughter is every bit as important as the tears. You have a right to change direction in the middle of your path. Holiday grief is unpredictable. You may be all ready to go somewhere or do something and suddenly be overwhelmed. When that happens, it's all right to change your mind. There's plenty of time in life to be predictable. Exercise your right to change when you need to. You have a right to do things that different times, go to church at a different time, open presents at a different time, serve your meal at a different time, give up sometimes and go to bed at a different time. Don't be a slave to the holiday clock. You have a right to rest, peace, and solitude. You don't need to be busy all the time. Take a nap whenever you need one and get that rest. Take time to pray or meditate to recharge your spirit. It can do you much more good than eating another meal can. You have the right to do it all different again next year. Just because you change things one year does not mean you have to have it written in stone. And next year, you can always change it back or do it yet in a new way. Look around you this evening. We gather as a community, friends, and family, all in support of each other as we strive to keep the memory of all those we hold dear as alive and bright today as when they walked hand in hand beside us. In just a moment, beginning with everyone in the front row, 
You're welcome to exit the chapel through the main entry. Through the entry doors, come through the hallway that separates our two chapels and back up here to the front as you'll have an opportunity from with someone in your family to state the name of that person or those family members or friends that you're remembering here tonight. And all of you will have a chance to light a votive candle and take one in their memory. For it's that light that we shine together as we keep their stories told at holidays, at different events, and in all the days ahead to keep them alive with all of us. And so those of you in the front row, you may exit the chapel at this time. Tonight, I light a candle in memory of my parents, Ken and Darlene Robillard. a candle in memory of my husband, Sylvester Chad Smith, my mom and dad, Ryan Gretna DeShane, and my brother and sister, Dale DeShane and Beverly Dix. a candle in memory of my sister Shirley Crow light a candle in memory of my dad, Mike Fitzgerald. candle for my grandfather Al Hartle and my godfather Gary Bisty. 
I'm lighting a candle for my twin brothers, James and Daniel. candle for Carl Fail, his parents Byron and Hazel Fail, and my parents Harvey and Margaret Jones. and Shirley Kroll. Tonight we are lighting a candle for my mom and dad, Bill and June Berenger, my in-laws, Herbie and Kay Free, and our son, Tyler Free. Tonight I light a candle for my father, John Eshelman, and for my husband, Russ May. sister, Karen Ann McKee, my mother and father, Dorothy and Leo, and my brother, Pat. in honor of my husband, Larry Graff, the love of my life.
lighting a candle for my dear wife, Mary Patricia Poppy, and the mother of these fine children here, and her son out in Phoenix, and also for their grandparents, Arnold and Mary Helen Bowles, and Merlin and Doris Poppy, and uh, all our relatives and all our friends that have passed before us. Light this candle in honor of my grandson Lucas, though he never drew breath, breath in this world, profoundly changed my life, and I know now rest with his Lord. our night, we invite you all to stay for a continued time of fellowship in our chapel just off to the side where the memorial tribute video is playing. We also have food and refreshments for all of you to stay and enjoy. So again, on behalf of our entire family, thank you all for being here and safe travels home tonight. <laughs>